Hey Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting a like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too, and let's crack on with today's first story. Much love guys. Now today's first story comes from NoCherry6260 from the Am I the Arsehole subreddit and says, Am I the arsehole for not paying for the things that my toddler destroyed? Sorry in advance for the mistakes I'll make, as English is my second language. I, 36 female, have a two and a half year old son. He's energetic and curious, like every child is supposed to be. Meltdowns are age appropriate, but he usually doesn't do that unless he misses sleep, gets sick, or something like that. I make sure to let him release his energy in playgrounds, etc. Every day, so he wouldn't climb furniture. Lol. Our parenting style is similar to that British show called Super Nanny. By that I mean, for example, if you don't eat your vegetables, you won't get any dessert. No matter how much you cry, won't change that. Or 7.30 is sleep time after our nighttime routine. Unless there is an extreme case, 99% of the time he will be in his bed, trying not to be in bed to have more fun. We do a little dance where he comes back to me and I put him in his bed again and again. Rules are the rules. My mother-in-law, 58 female, lives far away from us and invited us to her home so she can see her grandson face to face instead of everyday FaceTiming. Her home is filled with knickknacks, etc. I mean, it is not ideal to have my toddler live there for a week, but with our parenting style, if we say no, it means no. So we thought it'd be manageable with my 24 seven supervision. What we didn't calculate was my mother-in-law's character. She is not a recovering people pleaser. She is a proud people pleaser. She thinks she is like Mother Teresa, but it is actually one of my husband's traumas that he had to act extra aggressive to people to protect his mother from the people using her. She started giving my son chocolate cake behind my back because he refused eating his proper meal. And I was like, he will eat when he is hungry. Apparently, she couldn't imagine a toddler being left hungry by his mother. And since he is refusing the meal, he has to eat something right? Whenever my son has meltdowns for the things that I wouldn't let him do, she saves him from his despot mum and does the thing with him because she couldn't bear watching him cry like it is the end of the world. Thanks to her week-long action, now my son thinks my mother-in-law overrides my rules. If he cries enough, he can get what he wants. So now he doesn't stop crying for a long time since eventually his angel of a grandma will save him. Today, I woke up with flu, and my mother-in-law volunteered to babysit him. After a few hours, she came to my room, asking for me to pay for her kitchen cabinets. Apparently, he was banging a ladle on the cabinet doors and made a lot of dents on the paint. I was like, where were you when it happened? She was right there. She wouldn't have left him alone, of course. Why didn't you take the ladle from his hands? Well, he didn't let her. After the meaningless back and forth with similar questions and I already had a headache from my sinus, I just went back to sleep saying, no, I won't pay and it seems like you need to discipline your grandson and be the bad guy for the first time. Now she is crying in her room, so am I the asshole? I would have loved to have seen this situation where this grown adult mother-in-law wasn't able to remove a ladle from a two and a half year old. And this is just one of those situations where actions have consequences you had a routine in place for a very good reason she decided to you know crap all over that she decided to remove this routine and is now facing the consequences of that but in the comments soprano says not the asshole your son didn't let his grandma take the ladle back assuming your mother-in-law has perfectly functional hands she should have easily been able to take a ladle from a toddler Normally, I would say that parents are responsible for anything their child breaks, but it sounds like grandma didn't want to discipline your son under any circumstances, but has no reservations about making it your problem. And if your mother-in-law were better about enforcing rules and boundaries in the first place, your son probably wouldn't have been able to get a hold of the ladle and use it to hit the kitchen cabinets hard enough to cause noticeable cosmetic damage. Sadly, it sounds like these kind of problems will persist unless you set hard ground rules with your mother-in-law. It'd take a while to get your son to stop associating his grandma with laxity in the rules and he'll keep pitting the two of you against each other. 
This Count Mithril says, not the arsehole, sounds like grandma fucked around and found out. You were doing right by your child and she decided she knew better. The price for that sounds like new paint. Hopefully she learns a lesson on this one and grows a bit of a backbone with her grandson. Someone you don't know says not the arsehole. Why should you pay for the damage caused by your son when your mother-in-law, who volunteered to babysit him, was supposed to be watching him? If she doesn't want to discipline the child, then she shouldn't volunteer to watch him. Let me tell you a true story about myself. My parents left me alone with my grandmother on their date night, and I started chewing on a cord that was plugged into an electrical outlet. My grandmother, like your mother-in-law, didn't want to make me cry, so she just let me keep chewing on it until I eventually broke through and got electrocuted, burning a giant hole in the side of my mouth that left a scar that remains over 50 years later. Refusing to discipline a child is not an act of love, it's an act of laziness. Holy moly, that person is lucky to be alive. Imagine sitting there watching a child chew through an electrical cord. Tiny says... Lord, I remember when my mother-in-law handed markers and coloring book while my little ones were sitting on the couch, then panicked when an inch-long mark was made on the fabric. Washable marker. Mom, you handed them an instrument of the crime and chose the location yourself. We cleaned the mark off while she was all flustered and looking up upholstery cleaners. And one final comment from Comfortable Way who says, not the asshole. My mother is like that as well. She never says no because she is grandma. She complains the kids don't listen to her and she cannot take them outside because they don't stop watching TV. She can't turn the TV off though because my son has the remote. How can she possibly be an adult and take it from him? But I digress. Lots of resentment there. She has some expensive glasses and when my son was little and liked pulling on things, she let him do it to her glasses because she's grandma. I told her I won't pay for them if he breaks them. She eventually made him stop. What I'm trying to say is, it was nice when the kids were small, but now they're grew and she complains they don't listen and stuff. I just chose to extract myself from the situation. I told her they also try this shit with us, but we shut it down quickly. Unless she does that as well, she'll have a hard time with them. And of course, she doesn't put her foot down, so I refuse to engage with her when she wants to complain. It's annoying, it's infuriating, but it's on her. Not the asshole again. If the kid breaks stuff under her supervision as she wanted to do in the first place, then it's definitely on her. You can't play the nice grandma and expect others to pay the bill. So, OP does come back in with an update and says, so when I took my rest, no longer having a headache, I sat down with my mother-in-law and talked about how her actions affect my son and my son's relationship with me and the environment he is in. I told her that undermining my authority is never a good idea, even though I might be stricter than she prefers. This is how I choose to raise my son. I've been with him 24-7 since the day he was born, and I do observe he is more happy and learning better with a more structured life. She tried to argue that she is a mum for 36 years, and I'm just a mum for two and a half years. I told her my son is not the same person as her son, so they may have different needs. Plus the time is different now. We grew up playing on the streets with our big cousins taking care of us, for a car barely passed by. Every neighbour knew us, and... There was like a, it takes a village situation going on. On the other hand, my son doesn't have that, let him free, they grow themselves kind of luxury. Well, since in her head she is the best and nicest person around, she still tried to argue whatever she did was for the good of her grandson. It took for me to threaten her with letting my husband know about this and let him decide what to do going forward. Then she accepted to act according to my wishes. There are a lot of comments in my previous post about what my husband does meanwhile. Well, he travels for work. He just spent the first day with us, then hopped cities for a week, auditing the franchising locations he is working for. And when the week ended, he came to take us to our hometown, which was yesterday. I try not to share every small disagreement with my husband, as he is always quick to action instead of thinking it through. While we have the same principles about life, and we agree about almost everything, Yet I think his execution of our same ideas needs some more grace, in my opinion. That was why my mother-in-law was afraid of his reaction to the situation. She knows for the fact he may decide not to show her grandson to her at all. At the end, she did do what I told her, but she still tried to make me the bad guy by saying, well, your mum told us not to do that, instead of saying it is a wrong thing to do. It took her half a day to revert back to her usual self. You guys were expecting some broken knickknacks when I mentioned them. Well, it happened. 
Her fridge door is full of magnets that she collected around the world while traveling in her younger days. I forbid my son not to touch them at all, and he did avoid them altogether, until she overrode my decision and said, being curious is good for kids. Let's look at them together and you can touch the plastic ones. My son, instantly being mesmerized by them, made them his life mission to explore every single one of them. He was now obsessed with them and he spent all day and found himself in front of the fridge every chance he got. He doesn't know the concept of plastic or not and of course eventually dropped and broke one of the non-plastic ones. I'm not paying for that either. Karma, I guess. I'm just glad he didn't broke the heirloom crystal glassware that was showcased in a show cabinet. That would have broke my heart as a wannabe history geek. P.S. Few comments made fun of me referencing Super Nanny. I admit it was wrong of me to do that. I just wanted to paint a picture in your head about my parenting style. And I only watched two episodes and happened to agree to the methods used there. I googled the problems about Super Nanny and I learned that they were forcing kids to act out to have more drama on screen and blasting kids' mistakes to public may result with them getting bullied at school, which is indeed abuse. My kid is not problematic, he's just energetic and curious, and I don't think I'm punishing him by setting rules. He's more happy when he can guess what will happen next. Predictability makes him feel safe and in control. And there was a lot of people sharing their own stories about what with the children's grandpas and grandmas and, and how they think that they can overrule what they've been teaching them, that, you know, their routines. But what do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and let's move on to another story. And our next story comes from a throwaway account from the Relationship Advice subreddit that says boyfriend, 35 male, thinks my writing, 28 female, is dangerous. I'll try to keep this as short as possible, but first I have to explain. My boyfriend of two years was the most gentle man I'd ever met. I'd just left an abusive relationship and he was really understanding. He held me when I'd cry. He took me on lots of lovely dinner dates. We took loving photos together. He was the perfect package, like, what the fuck, finally? Looking back, I stupidly didn't see the signs. In the very, very beginning, he asked me for my financial information because he was worried that I was financially irresponsible. I guess over time, I tried to prove myself to him and it was never enough. Last week, I shared with him that I signed up for a writing workshop. We're at home and I casually asked him to help with dinner. He completely blew his lid, started screaming at me. Among hurtful things he said, I was pissing money away and that my course could be dangerous. I left and we've barely spoken. I need advice. This isn't about writing, I guess. He used to be super supportive and now he's not. Lately, I've been asking more of him to help with the dog, help with groceries, help with cooking. But in the comments, there was a couple of people that asked OP questions. The Caribbean Redditor says, why would he say that he doesn't have feelings for you? Why would he be in a relationship with you in that case? What exactly is his issue with the writing workshop? What would you say is the thought behind why you call crying when he doesn't respond? Opie says I have no idea. He used to become quite upset. Now I think he has his own issues. I think I'm starting to see the light. He doesn't like the workshop because he wants me at home to cook more. That's why the argument started. Hmm. And it used to bother me when I couldn't get a hold of him. He had so many rules such as I had to text and ask permission before calling. I was frustrated. I think I was really lonely. Not so much anymore. Unseen Streams replies and says he wants you home to cook more. Opie says yes, but he has more and more rules. He wants me home to cook when he wants me to. Not because I've invited him over. I can't cook past 7.30pm. He does not cook because he had a maid growing up. He sees grocery shopping as beneath him. He swings wildly between I need to save money and let's splurge. It's actual insanity now that I've typed this out. OP came in with an update a little bit after this one and said, I read it five months ago. I posted about my boyfriend here and shared the link to that post, which we just read. It's pretty hard to return and read some of the comments that I've been making. It was such a dark time and I had normalized all the shitty things that he was doing. To give an update, Shortly after I posted about my boyfriend, my dog and I were in a small accident and I was really worried about her. I reached out to my boyfriend who said, 
we all have to die someday and that my dog had lived a good life. What the fuck? I think that was a wake-up call that I was dealing with someone who did not have any empathy or sympathy. I just couldn't do it anymore. Normally, I would have cried or sobbed or begged for attention. But I think that was my breaking point. Luckily, I'd been strategic about asking for my keys a few weeks prior to that. So I was able to slowly fade away. It was very calm and non-dramatic. He still shows up at the gym and places I frequent, but I've been laying low and spending more time with friends. The good news is that I've joined another writing workshop and my work has been doing well, as well as my friendships, and I've lost a little weight. I'm much less stressed and much happier. For someone who continually tore me down, it's hilarious that my ex was let go from his job. He's been unemployed and living with his mum. My dog and I are doing great. I'm casually seeing someone else, a writer, if you can imagine, and focusing on myself. Thanks again, Reddit. We have a couple more updates in a second, but I just wanted to comment on that when he talked about the dog and said that we all have to die someday and the dog lived a good life. It always gives me like chills when people talk like that and they have no empathy and just gives me real bad vibes about that person but the next update said i read it again i've been seeing someone pretty casually for about three to four months i call him ben ben knows i've just left a bad relationship and he's been super patient for the most part ben is a huge writer and we really bonded over our love of writing he encouraged me to keep writing and at first i felt really supported i sent some of my older pieces that weren't too emotional with time, I started writing about things that were happening in my life. I recently wrote a piece about another man. I told Ben that the man was bothering me and low-key harassing me. The piece mostly talked about how the man kept calling me, giving me weird pet names, and how I couldn't escape it because of the situation. There was absolutely no attraction to this man at all. So Ben read it and instead of his usual encouraging words, he said that it sounds like I'm attracted to the guy. He said I spoke about the man's body I must be attracted to him. He said, you have an attachment to him, even if it's a bad thing. He said, the piece sounds like I'm talking about a crush. I'm so confused. We agreed to disagree, I guess, and now I have to be more private about my writing. Was I wrong to send that? And then OP came in with what they called their final update and said, hey, Reddit. Mods, I hope this is okay. I wanted to give a final update because this community helped me so much. I was in an abusive relationship and in a really bad place. I turned to Reddit and you all validated and helped me. You can see my posts here and here. Eight months ago, I left my ex who was becoming controlling over my poetry. Yes, my poetry. At that time, I was just starting to write and he would literally stand behind me and watch everything that I was submitting. I jumped out of that relationship and started dating a writer. Because what could be better than that? Except the person I was dating also had issues with my poetry. He accused me of writing about past lovers in my poems, which wasn't true at all. As with many folks leaving an abusive relationship, I found myself in another one. Anyway, the good news is that I finally left the toxic relationships. I threw myself into my writing over the last five months and wrote more than I ever have. I've never worked so hard in my life. Read it, you won't believe it. I managed to publish my poetry, take part in an art show, hosted two workshops with other poets and I also used my writing as a service for business owners and now I have clients. There are so many wonderful gifts, talents and layers to myself that I'm discovering. I've made so many wonderful friends over the last eight months. Sometimes I have to pinch myself because I will attend an event slash class or whatever and meet a new sister. I've really become my happy, beautiful and bubbly self. When I was in my first relationship, I couldn't write because I was constantly trying to make my boyfriend happy. First, I wasn't making enough money. Then, I wasn't educated enough. Then, I wasn't cooking the right meals, on and on and on. For two years, I catered to that man. It was never enough for him. So, I wanted to say thank you. And for anyone else who is struggling in a relationship and not feeling good enough, I hope you know there is a much happier world on the other side. Is this a happy update? Thanks, Reddit. I'm so glad that OP has got themselves out of those relationships and is finally, you know, discovering themselves and living their life the best way they can at the moment. There was a lot of people in the comments after this one saying, you know, after being in an abusive relationship, you definitely need to take some time to yourself. Potential therapy at the same time as well. Because of the potential problem 
of, you know, bouncing into another relationship that is abusive. We've certainly seen it a few times on this channel. But now I'm going to turn it to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Uh, just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love.